Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone. I um, hope everyone is doing well. In this video, I'm gonna revise testing for gases, cations, and anions. So let's begin. First of all, the first one here is um, ammonia gas. You know, guys, ammonia gas has alkaline properties. So the test for ammonia gas will be by using a damp red litmus paper. So it turns blue. Here we have a damp red litmus paper. Once we close it to the mouth of a tube, that produces ammonia gas. And H3, so the color turn is blue as you see. On the contrary, here we have chlorine gas. Chlorine gas, actually, you know, guys, it has acidic properties. So, for acidic properties, actually, we need to use a damp blue litmus paper. Here we have a damp blue litmus paper. So, first of all, as you see, it turns red and then it's bleached to be white completely. So, remember for chlorine. First of all, it turns blue litmus paper red, and then it bleaches to be white completely. Then we have here oxygen gas. You know, guys, oxygen gas helps on burning, but it doesn't burn. So for the test for oxygen, actually, we need to use a glowing splint. So and take care here, this is glowing splint, and then oxygen will relight. So the test for oxygen gas, a positive test, that it relights a glowing splint. And then we have hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas, by the way, it can burn. So the test for hydrogen will be by using a lighted splint. And here, guys, please take care. For hydrogen, we use a lighted splint, but for oxygen, we use a glowing splint. In case of hydrogen, so first of all, hydrogen burns with a squeaky pop sound. And so you need to mention this in your answers that first of all, hydrogen burns with as quick hip up sound okay next one is test for carbon dioxide gas you know guys carbon dioxide we need to use um, clear lime water which is a solution of calcium hydroxide caoh2 as you know guys once we couple carbon dioxide through lime water lime water turns milky or cloudy why you know guys because carbon dioxide reacts with calcium hydroxide regarding to this equation to produce calcium carbonate and this this one actually causes milky or cloudy for the solution because it's solid or ppt and plus water so the positive test for carbon dioxide after using the indicator which is lime water the positive test is lime water turns milky or cloudy next one here we have sulfur dioxide Actually, guys, for sulfur dioxide gas, this is SO2 gas. We need to use uh, potassium manganate. Uh, the color of potassium manganate solution is purple. Here you can see this is potassium manganate. This is purple color. And then we need to drop it onto a filter paper like this. As you see, we need to drop onto a filter paper. And then we close the filter paper into a mouth of the tube that produces sulfur dioxide gas so once SO2 sulfur dioxide gas here once it contacts with the filter paper so the color will be graduated through all of these color until it's gonna be colorless actually guys in your stage in RGCSC stage actually you need to know only the first color which is purple for the potassium manganate and to know the last one which is colorless so in your answer you should memorize that the purple color of potassium manganate okay turn is colorless so we need to know from purple to colorless directly okay so here we have a gas summary for they are the old gases we studied right now here we have this is ammonia carbon dioxide chlorine hydrogen oxygen and sulfur dioxide the second test will be testing for anions so the first anion we have you know guys anion they are the negative halves of compounds so the first anion here is carbonate you know carbonate is co3 2 minus and in this test actually it produces carbon dioxide gas as you know and carbon dioxide gas we said a little earlier it turns the clear lime water milky or cloudy so we need to add a chemical solution or a chemical substance to carbonate sample in order to produce carbon dioxide gas what is this actually we need to add an acid so for example we can add a dilute HCl or you can add a dilute HNO3 
So after adding the acid to the sample that contains carbonate, actually an effervescence, or you could say fizzing, uh, occurs that shows actually that we have this is a carbonate. I can say this is a positive result of the positive test for the uh, carbonate. And we have this equation also. After production of carbon dioxide, you see this is this carbon dioxide reacts with calcium carbonate to produce calcium carbonate. So color changes from colorless into milky or cloudy. So this is the test for carbonate. Next one, here we have test for sulfate. You know guys, sulfate also SO4 2 minus. And for sulfate, actually guys, the test for sulfate usually is to react with um, barium 2 plus cation to produce PaSO4 solid barium sulfate. Barium sulfate actually guys is a precipitate which is very clear in reaction. So what is the chemical um, test or what is the indicator we need to add? So actually guys here we need to add uh, for example barium chloride PaCl2 solution which is acidified with HCl into the sample that contains sulfate and then the observation so we have or we see a white precipitate that shows the positive test. So remember guys to check sulfate we need barium chloride in order to allow sulfate to combine with barium to form the white precipitate of barium sulfate. Next one is going to be sulfite anion. You know guys sulfite is SO3 2 minus and take care this is sulfite which is different from sulfate because sulfate is SO4 and sulfite is SO3 so please take care and then actually the test for sulfite will be by production of SO2 gas sulfur dioxide and I think we studied little early SO2 you know guys this turn is the purple potassium manganate into colorless so actually it's gonna be the same test actually so what is the substance we need to add for this sample actually we need to add acidified potassium manganate solution to the sulfite salt solution and then you know guys here we have this is the reactants and finally we have as you see the purple color of KMnO4 or potassium manganate turns colorless next anion is nitrate you know guys nitrate is NO31 minus test for nitrate is gonna be by adding a few drops of dilute sodium hydroxide in AOH with a piece of aluminium foil and of course we need to heat gently so first of all ammonium ions will be produced and then ammonia gas is going to be produced also and you know guys ammonia gas and H3 which is here this is ammonia gas you know we studied before this one has alkaline properties if you remember it was the first one in the presentation so here it changes the damn red litmus paper into blue next test is gonna be a test for halides actually here we have three halides we have chloride we have bromide and we have iodide as you see guys before starting the test here we have three colors they are really important to be memorized because they are the precipitates for everyone here you see for chloride it forms a white precipitate as you see and for bromide it forms a cream precipitate and for uh, iodide it forms a yellow precipitate but how can we reach to this precipitate actually we need to add a chemical indicator so here this is the starting point we need to place a solution of the halide in a test tube everyone this is chloride this is bromide and this is iodide then we need to add um, some dilute nitric acid and also we need to add silver nitrate solution take care guys after adding this mixture mixture between dilute nitric acid and silver nitrate here we'll have these three different results as you see for chloride it produces white for bromide it produces cream for iodide it produces yellow and here is the summary as you see CLPR minus or minus and here we have the colors okay 
So here you have the summary for anions, as you see. Here we have all anions we have studied. You have carbonate, you have chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate, sulfate, and finally sulfite. So you can read carefully and you can also memorize carefully. Um, next test is going to be testing for cations. You know, guys, cations are the positive uh, halves of compounds, as you know. Uh, for testing cations, actually, we have two different uh, tests. So the first one is called flame test. And second one is called chemical test. For flame test, actually, let's check here we have, as you see, the method itself. Please, guys, carefully take care of the, the method itself because we may have question of this uh, method in exam. So you need to take care. First of all, in that method itself, we need to clean a platinum or an eye chrome wire. And of course, both of them, as you see, they have a common property because both of them are inert, or you know, they are. In, or you can say they are unreactive so we need to clean them by dipping into concentrated hydrochloric acid and then holding it or both of them or one of them in a hot pungent flame until the wire doesn't reproduce a flame color so this is the first stage in order to clean the uh, platinum wire or a nichrome wire and then we need to dip once again the clean wire into fresh concentrated acid and then into a small amount of the test solid or the solution actually test solid or a solution this is the sample you need to check what is this actually and then we need to return the wire to the blue punsen flame and observe the flame color so here we have the results of group one cations once we do the flame test for them here we have actually three elements we need to memorize of group one only these uh, three elements so lithium cation as you see it produces a red color on the flame test and also for um, uh, sodium it produces yellow and for potassium it produces lilac or you could say pale purple so here you have lithium red sodium yellow and potassium lilac so for group two guys here we have flame test for two elements only for group two here we have you see calcium and also we have barium. So for calcium, the color is you could say prick or orange red. As you see, this is for calcium, orange red or prick red. And for barium, you need to say light green, as you see. So here we have only two uh, uh, cations of group two. And finally, we have only one uh, cation of transition metal, which is copper. You see guys here copper it produces blue green color on the flame test as you see the color please guys try to memorize the flame test carefully because it's really important also in exam now let's move to the chemical test here guys this is test for cations actually this is chemical test as we said so the first one is going to be ammonium you see guys ammonium cations in h4 actually it produces uh, nh3 gas and as you know in hsc gas we studied so many now it can turn the damp red litmus paper into blue but what is the substance we need to add so actually we need to add a dilute sodium hydroxide solution for that uh, ammonium uh, solution as you see and then once we add sodium hydroxide this is we could say this is the indicator of the chemical test we can use sodium hydroxide so it produces ammonia gas that turns the red litmus paper blue here you see this is the ionic equation as you see NH4 this is ammonia plus OH minus to produce NH3 this is ammonia gas plus water okay we have the test for the rest of cations so let's start with copper 2 you see guys this is copper 2 Cu2 plus as you see guys here we have this is the aqueous ion itself here in the left and here once this is the result once we add it to NaOH and here is in the case of excess NOH, and here is in case of ammonia. Actually, we need to know here only for the copper too, it produces a pale blue precipitate. This is formed actually in dilute and excess NOH, as you see. So in case of copper too, you need to know that it produces a pale blue precipitate in case of dilute NOH and excess NOH, okay? Here also we have the second one is iron two. You know, guys, iron can form, this is Fe2+. Iron forms actually, you know, two 
cations Fe2 plus and here just one down is Fe3 plus you need to memorize and remember all the time that iron 2 Fe2 plus forms a pale green precipitate a pale green precipitate once you add it to NaOH either it's dilute excess or even if you add it to NH3 it produces all the time a pale green precipitate but for Fe3 plus you see guys it produces a red brown precipitate so actually I think it's very clear and also you need to rise to differentiate between Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus okay next one actually here this is zinc 2 this is Zn2 plus it produces a white precipitate but you see this is soluble in excess NOH and in NH3 so here you see guys the first one only in case of dilute NOH it produces a white precipitate but in case of excess and in case of ammonia it forms a solution or you can say it's soluble here and finally in this slide we have calcium 2 this is Ca2 plus I think you see carefully here this is a precipitate and here we have also a precipitate so calcium 2 guys it forms a white precipitate with NOH and you see here in NOH whatever it's dilute or it's excess so it's a white precipitate but it's soluble only in case of ammonia then we have the next test is going to be for chromium 3 you see this is CR3 CR3 plus you see guys chromium produces a green precipitate with NaOH but you see it's soluble in excess NOH here in excess as you see this is soluble and here is as you see this is a PPT but it produces actually guys a green green precipitate in NH3 so finally here we have this is aluminium 3 AL3 plus as you see guys aluminium produces a white precipitate with both NaOH diluted and with NH3 but actually it's soluble in case of excess NaOH so for aluminium Al3 plus it's as you see soluble only in case of excess NaOH but in case of dilute NaOH and in case of NH3 it forms a white precipitate finally guys here you have also this is the summary for cations we studied here you can check also carefully here you have aluminium here you have ammonium calcium ammonium copper iron 2 iron 3 and zinc so this is the end of the presentation hopefully it was helpful thank you so much guys see you